Assessment Planning Creating an Inline Inspection New Assessment Welcome back to the User Guide video series for Cognitive Integrity Management. In this video, we will provide an overview of ingesting inline inspection data as a part of the assessment planning process. The purpose of these videos is to go over the key steps required to upload your inline inspection data. We will show you how to create a new inline inspection assessment. You can schedule a new assessment and assign due dates to ensure assessments are completed on time. This especially becomes valuable on regulatory activity. Okay, let's get into the solution. When you click on plus new on the top right of the assessment table, you are directed to a new screen. The first step is to select the system you are assessing. This list is imported from the asset management system, pods, or simply manually inputted. The next step is to fill out the fields under assessment details, which include name, method, for this video we will be choosing the inline inspection method, category, here you will find baseline, integrity, and reassessment. Baseline provides a first inspection of the asset that all subsequent inspections can be measured against. Reassessment provides a subsequent inspection for identifying new damage or growth from the prior or baseline inspection. Integrity can be used for other various inspections focusing on an area of integrity created at the discretion of the engineer, but will not be used as part of a baseline or reassessment. Due date. This is the date that the assessment should be completed by. Tool technology. A user can choose one or several tool technologies related to the assessment. Begin and End ENGR Station. This field is optional, but available if you want to specify the exact engineering stations that your assessment will cover. Entering this value will give you additional options to partially accept or reject a tool later on in the process if needed. To enter this data, you would click on the Edit icon to open a dialog box. You can use the pods information grid on the assessment screen below as a reference when entering this data. Enter Begin Engineering Station where the assessment begins, leaving out the plus symbol. Then, either hit the Tab button or click out of the text box to continue. If there is more than one stationing record that matches the value that you input, you must select the one you would like to use. You would do the same for the end station where the assessment ends, again leaving out the plus symbol, and clicking Tab or clicking out of the text box. Once you save this data, you will see in the Assessment Summary section that the length, HCA length, and diameter is populated for the engineer station range that you selected. Pods Integration You will notice that once you selected a system name, all the related pods information appears in a grid below the Assessment Details section if you have connected your pods database. If you had chosen to specify a begin and end engineering station, this pods grid would also now be filtered to only the stationing that is within the range that you entered in the previous step. After assessment created. Once completed, then click on Save to create the assessment. You will now see that data loaded into the assessment information screen, and you can add additional details such as assigning the assessment to a specific engineer. Management of change, MOC, details. Integrity review dates. Closure dates. Below assessment details, you will see the following tabs pods, planning, execution, vendor data, comments, attachments, reports, validation. These tabs are listed in the order that you will use them in most instances. Go ahead and click on planning. You can add data regarding work order, execution dates, this step is required to proceed, schedules, launcher receiver information, mechanical datasheet information, vendor information, and decontamination information. Now, let's move on to the Execution tab. Now that you have already entered your execution dates under the Planning tab, you can move on to entering the result status under the Tool Technology Results section of the Execution tab. There are options to accept, reject, or even partially accept a tool run. In this case, we will accept and click Save. Once you do that, you can move on to the Vendor Data tab. Under the Vendor Data tab. Now, in this tab, 
Once you receive a vendor inline inspection report, you click plus new and a pop-up will appear. Here, you determine whether it is a prelim report or a final report. The tool technology used, enter an appropriate name, report receipt date, and finally select whether the values are measured imperial or metric. Click Save. Under the Vendor Report table, you will also find vendor report information where you can add additional details such as transmittal dates and it allows you to edit existing information. Once this step is complete, you can now upload the vendor report. This is where the magic happens. This step is critical in the sense that it is where the ILI data is uploaded into the system and the data science and machine learning algorithms are run. On the Vendor Reports grid, you will see the record you just created. Click the Upload Vendor Report button and select your file to start the load. Once a vendor report is ingested, this triggers our alignment and classification algorithms to run in the background. You will receive a notification once this step kicks off and receive subsequent notifications for each stage of ingestion. This process can take anywhere from a few minutes to an hour for extremely large datasets. If you are loading more than one assessment at a time, these datasets will go into a queue and you will be notified as each is submitted. Reports tab. Once you have received a notification that the ingestion of the vendor report is complete, you can go ahead and click on the Reports tab. Here, you will see some of the assessment reporting in the system. SIM provides a suite of enterprise-level reporting that we have compiled using industry standards across different personas and needs. Here, you will see the ones related to the assessment planning module, such as the Log Features Report, HCA locations, assessment history, etc. This will be covered in more detail in our videos discussing reporting. Important! In this video, we will briefly discuss the assessment summary report as it pertains to the vendor report that was just uploaded. It is important to look at the features detected table in the assessment summary report and review how SIM has classified features. Here, the user should ensure that the solution has accurately classified features as expected within your IMP. Should you run into any issues, please contact support at onebridgesolutions.com. Now, moving to the Comments tab. This is functionality that is built in across the entire system. This allows users to enter in freeform comments and interactions within the system. Integrity specialists can maintain notes, chat with other users which sends a notification to the intended party, functions as a great collaboration tool. The Attachment tab also functions the same. Users can attach any files related to the assessment such as quotes, work orders, POs. Validation tab. Finally, the Validation tab is a reoccurring tab where the solution identifies issues with input fields that need resolving before the process can move forward. We have now covered a basic overview of how to create an assessment within the assessment planning module. Please feel free to send any questions related to this module to support at onebridgesolutions.com. Thank you for joining. Please continue to the next video in the series.